This is a 2019 Jeep Renegade Upland 4x4. This SUV was designed for off-roading in style. A somewhat unknown fact is that Jeep likes to hide little surprises around the vehicle, also known as Easter eggs. And in this particular Jeep, you'll find a spider on the gas tank, a Yeti marching across the rear window, and even a ham sandwich sitting on the dash. Eh, I'm just kidding on that one. That's for me to munch on later. Today, I will be interviewing Nate Miller on the subject of Mercy Forgives. Nate grew up going to Westgate and is now actually employed full-time as the media director for Dove Westgate Church. I can't wait to have Nate as an interviewee in this SUV while we drink some iced tea. Let's get into it. Hey, How are you? thanks for joining me, dude. Thanks for having me. I yeah. appreciate it. Ready for this? Yeah, are you ready? I got you some iced tea. Hey, hey. thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Quick. Nice and refreshing. Uh, no, no, not for you? No, I I actually really hate tea. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, well, then this is not really the um, show for you, is it? Uh, not really. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me, even despite your uh, hatred for tea. Uh, that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll still drink it. So, Nate, you know that we've been going through the sermon series. So, we're at the point in the series where we're kind of looking at the connection between mercy and forgiveness. And I know that forgiveness has been something you've had to walk through and work out. And so, I was kind of hoping maybe you could just share a, a little bit with me what that's been like for you, how you've walked through it, and and, uh, and how God has just brought you to a place of victory. You know, we all go through these hurdles in our life. And one of the hurdles I, I had to hop over growing up was when I was really little I was uh, I was abused by a, a relative oh my word yeah that was something that really it weighed on me a lot growing up and something that I I yeah. never really understood the amount of pain and the amount of forgiveness that I had to walk through yeah. to see God come through in that situation mm. to, for that situation to be redeemed and when I uh, was going through uh, middle school and whatnot I was really dealing with these heavy emotions and really didn't know how to deal with them and so I took a lot of that pain and I turned it towards myself and I even uh, went through a time where I didn't want to exist I didn't want to be on this earth and I really oh, uh, you know I would sit there every single night and debate should I kill myself right then and there you know I tried to satisfy this uh, this anger and this frustration with different things and I found out the only way that I could truly see life and that was to forgive the person who had hurt me so much as a child and how do you I mean, how did you come to that realization I was it did you just literally just kind of wake up in the morning and kind of just like boom I got to do this I mean was there something that kind of like was a turning point for you because that's a that's a serious and heavy journey that you've walked through you know, so how did you come to that place I was sitting in church one day and uh Jeff Burkholder asked me if I wanted to go to a youth event with him so I told him no I was not interested whatsoever I wasn't interested in God I wasn't interested in a relationship with him I wasn't even interested in going to any of these events and and let me guess knowing Jeff he wasn't going to take that for an answer right? no he did not <laughs> he did not take no for an answer yeah. he's a very persistent guy and yep. just to get this guy off of my freaking back I said sure I'll go to this event and that was the night that I really felt compelled to forgive the person who had mm. hurt me when I was a kid and forgiveness is as much for you and as much for me as it is for the person that you're forgiving yeah it's almost like the other person doesn't have to even ask for forgiveness for you to extend that forgiveness yeah. to them when I sat down with this person I sat down and I I uh, I told them that because I was very young when this happened to me I was like three or four years old mm. so I sat this person down and I said listen you know I I want you to know that I, I know what you did to me as a child and I just wanted to let you know that I, I forgive you and I love you. After I said that this person, it became the starting of a relationship with this person. Okay. A healthy relationship, okay. obviously, but a relationship where I'm able to see this person for more than what they had done to yeah. me. Yeah, and Nate. Yeah. That's a powerful story and even a testimony of not only, I feel like, just the power of God, but it also just is a, a good example, I think, for all of us to even to see, you know, our response to grace, you know, because the grace was there. You still had to choose. You had to choose to accept the grace of God and walk in that forgiveness, and you could have rejected it. It's an awesome testimony of just walking in obedience and the power of God. Well, I appreciate you sharing all of that. Um, 
Man, I was kind of so lost in your story. I think these Lancaster roads got me all turned around, and now I'm like lost. I have no here. idea where that, we are. Did we see that cow before? That cow looks familiar. We've seen that cow at least four times, I swear. <laughs> oh, no. I have no idea where okay. we are. <laughs> well, hey, nothing like just going for a joy ride, hearing powerful God stories, yeah. and drinking iced tea. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe not for you. I can yeah. drink your tea for you. Well, you can time? have my tea. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Well, I'm really glad you could join me today and just share some of this journey.